now for some more information about our MIG welders. To set this machine up, our Millermatic 252s do have a chart on the front of them that will tell you some recommended parameters for whatever thickness and and whatnot. It'll get you close. It's not the gold standard. It's just a good starting point. Um, the, the way we read this is you need to know a few things. You need to know what size wire we use. We need to know the thickness of our plate. We need to know what type of shielding gas, aside from the material you're welding. I already have mentioned the Dum Dum cards. Those will suggest a decent starting place for a lot of our common projects. Thinner plate, this 19 and a half and 245, that is just a roundabout okay spot for some short circuit welding on thinner plate and some of your projects. That's just a starting point. That's not, like I said, the gold standard. You've gotta be right there. Everybody welds a little bit different, so everybody's gonna have a different spot that they like to run their machine at. Like I mentioned in previous videos, we use 035 wire and 045 wire. 045 being the flux cord arc welding stuff. We're talking about our GMAW welding, gas metal arc welding. We use 035 wire. You can see here, well, I don't know if you can see on the video, but we're, we're welding on steel, for example, and we're using ER70S Dash six. Now this is a AWS classification for a type of welding wire. AWS stands for American Welding Society. We are welding on steel, mild steel, and this AWS classification says ER70S-S, or six, I mean. And what this means is, this is just a way to tell you what type of wire or rod, all of them have different classifications. Um, we'll get into more of this with stick welding as well. But E is for electrode, R is for rod, it's just an acronym for electrode rod. 70 is your tensile strength. This is the minimum amount of tensile strength. And when you see a 70 or a 60 or whatever, that means 70,000 pounds tensile strength. When we see the S, that's an acronym for solid core wire. Um, if we are using like your flex cord stuff, it's gonna have something else here instead of solid. It'll be for flux corded hollow wire. We know we're running that because that's all I've, I've got in this. Now on to our shielding gas. Our shielding gas that we use in our shop is C25. Easy way for you guys to remember is on each of these bottles, you'll see, it'll tell you the mixture here of what C25 is. Some of them will even have a sticker on this saying C25, but if you forget, it's written on the bottle. But that is 75% argon, and 25% CO2. Since we're on this subject, when you come to set up your flow rate on your MIG welder to set up your gas, this for what we're doing in the shop, you wanna be between 20 and 30. For some instances, you could be lower than 20 or greater than 30. But for us, we wanna be in between there to get proper shielding gas coverage. The best place to be, just to remember, is 25 PSI because we use C25, it's just one number to remember. So we run 25 PSI on our MIG welders. I'll come back and show you how to adjust pressure and whatnot on this here in a minute. So we know we're running C25 and we know we're running 035. Now we need to know what size or thickness of plate we're using. We're running right now 3 16 plate. So if we follow this over, it tells you 18.4 and 265. So the 18.4 is our voltage, 265 is the wire feed speed, the WFS. You'll see that acronym as well. So that's wire feed speed. Now to adjust these one way or the other, when you're trying to dial in a welder, um, it's best to adjust one at a time. Don't go and turn these around because you'll end up chasing yourself. Your voltage, what this changes is the arc characteristics. So with a higher amount of volts, if you can picture that cone, that arc cone, 
it with more voltage that arc cone is opened up more more heat when you lower that that shrinks your arc cone and it's more focused and, and a lot less heat your wire feed speed that's the rate that it is feeding wire how many inches per minute basically another way you can adjust the heat of your welds without adjusting voltage is to adjust your wire feed speed up or down an easy way for my brain to remember this is if you're trying to build a fire and you've got a little flame started if you're to crank this up and turn it up that's basically like throwing a whole bunch of wood on the fire and hoping that it will bring the heat or temperature up but as you know if you're doing that on a fire it's going to smother it and put the flame out okay it's actually going to lower the temperature so if you have too much wire feed speed and not enough voltage you're going to be running a weld as if you had not enough voltage so it's going to be spitting and sputtering and you can feel in your gun if you have too much wire feed speed you're going to feel a lot of kickback in the gun just because the wire is going to be stubbing out on the plate because the voltage cannot keep up with the amount of wire you're feeding it. If you're trying to build a big bonfire and you want to do it correctly, you're going to feed wire as slow or at the same rate that the fire can build with. Uh, so you're, you're going to slow down the, the rate at which you're throwing logs on the fire. Same thing with with this, we're gonna dial it in so it, this can keep up with whatever amount of wire or wood that that arc or flame can keep up with. But if you have this wire way too low for the amount of voltage you have, when you go to start your, your weld, this wire will come out and hit the plate and then immediately melt backward to the contact tip versus actually dropping the droplets in quickly like short circuit does, it's going to hit the plate and then melt back and then hit the plate and melt back because it's not got enough feed rate to keep up with the arc that you've got it set to. To adjust our shielding gas, these are pretty simple if you can just remember a couple things. The gauge closest to our tank tells us how much is left in the tank. These are filled to 2,500 or so PSI, which is a lot of pressure We'll get to some safety stuff here in a second. When we start getting down, you can see that this bottle is pretty close to empty. This will need to be changed here soon. And we have our gas pressure here and our pressure adjusting screw. Now, like I mentioned, the gauge closest to the tank tells us what's in the tank. The gauge closest to the hose feeding the machine tells you your working pressure for the machine, how much PSI you have feeding the gun. If you see, when I lower this, it's not lowering the pressure, but I can raise the pressure, but I cannot lower it. The way you lower the pressure after you back it out is by hitting the trigger. So if you come in and your gas pressure is crazy high, you're gonna lefty loosey this and then hit the trigger and drop all the pressure out and then bring this in to the desired PSI that we wanna run it at. Like I mentioned, 25 PSI is a good place easy to remember because we use C25 gas. And C25 is a mixture of 75% argon, 25% CO2. That's what we run in our shop for both flux cord arc welding because we're doing dual shield and solid wire. These are filled to a really high pressure. So safety precautions for all of our tanks, they have got to be chained upright vertical at all times. If you are transporting this or moving it or going to change and put a different bottle on this, you need to put the bottle cap back on this before you do any kind of moving. I always have them put the bottle cap on before we even take it off of the machine. We have replacement bottles over in our material storage room and that's where we're going to find the new bottles. We'll use an adjustable wrench for this and it's lefty loosey righty tighty it's standard thread come to me before we go and change your first bottles just so i can make sure you're doing everything correctly but it is a pretty simple thing to change because we do have only one bolt to take off we don't have to take any of this stuff off now to turn this on lefty loosey righty tighty easy way to remember is if you grab this valve with your right hand and you turn it towards your thumb 
you're going to be opening the tank. Now, if you turn it to the right, away from your thumb, you're turning this tank off. And these regulators are designed to operate with full pressure feeding it. So if you only open it a quarter turn, it's not getting the correct amount of pressure to maintain the, the flow rate you've, you've selected or tried to set it to. So we need to open this guy all the way till it stops. Now, at the end of every period, I would prefer you to turn this off, but you do not have to bleed the pressure out. You can leave it in there. You can back that screw out and bleed the pressure out, um, but in a high school setting, that causes more issues. Most kids forget to check the gas pressure because they assume the person before them left the gas on and you'll end up running a bead and get a whole bunch of porosity in it. Always double check the gas pressure, check to see if your tank is on before you do any welds. Same goes with the settings on the machine. Not everybody, like I mentioned, welds at the same settings. Everybody has their own desired settings that they usually go to for whatever thickness of material you're welding. So get used to finding the spot that you like. It's different for everybody, but that 19 and a half and 245, which is on the Dum Dum cards, like I mentioned, that's gonna get you close. That'll get you where you can run an okay bead, and from there, you're welcome to make adjustments up or down on either voltage or wire feed speed, your WFS. We haven't mentioned, because I haven't gone into any welding assignments yet, for the test, I'll ask you questions about CTWD. Now, CTWD is your contact tip to work distance. That's the distance from your contact tip or the edge of your, your shield or nozzle to your plate, whatever you're welding. Now the recommended distance for most of what we're doing is 3 eighths of an inch to a half inch away from the plate. An easy way to remember is a pinky to a thumb distance away from your plate. If you're too far away, the gun's gonna spit and sputter and you're not gonna get proper shielding coverage for your shielding gas. And if you're too close, you run the risk of welding that contact tip closed. Now that's CTWD, contact tip to work distance. All right, when you're finished at the end of the day, like you can see some of the booths are already wrapped up and cleaned, I would like to show you how I want these machines wrapped up. We're not gonna take this and wrap it really tight around one wire or one handle. What we're gonna do in an easy way is to undo your ground clamp get these all about the same distance apart and then just work from close to the machine back. We're going to start this loop to where this isn't making a sharp hard bend out of there. We don't wanna kink the liner in our guns and we don't want these leads dragging on the ground because if we have to move the machine, it's gonna catch and run over our grounds and our gun leads. So this is how I want you to wrap up our, our machines. Always be aware of where you're setting this. You don't wanna set it on the trigger because the next person who comes in, if we have it set like this and it's set on the trigger, when they turn this on, it's going to start feeding the wire like I mentioned in the other video. Now, if you're gonna switch from MIG welding to stick welding or back and forth. Let's say you come in and the stick welder's plugged in and the MIG welder's not. You run the risk of electrical shock when you're unplugging and plugging this in. You can wear leather gloves when you're going to do this just to be sure, but as long as you keep hold of the insulator, the outside of this plug when you're plugging it in and unplugging it, you're not gonna run the risk of getting shocked. What can happen is when you pull this out, some people will have this turned over or extended and they have their fingers touching these prongs when they go to put that in and that's gonna zap you really good. So make sure your fingers are not touching any part of the prongs or you're wearing gloves, leather gloves, and you can plug that in. 